Hello, my name's Dr. Cartwright Speakman, I'm one of the junior doctors here at the practice. Can I just get your full name and how old you are before we start, please? Yes, um, Jenny Tucker and I'm 33. Okay, and is Jenny okay? Yes, fine. Okay, Jenny, so one of my colleagues has asked me to talk to you today about why you've come into the practice, if that's okay? Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, what, what has brought you in today? Um, I just feel really low. Okay, okay. Could you tell me a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, I just... I just feel really low and I just don't, to be honest, I just don't know what to do. Okay, okay. How long has this been going on for? Um, about six months. Okay, okay. And did anything particular happen when this started? Um, me and my girlfriend broke up. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that, that's been quite difficult. Hmm. Okay. And since you've had this, this issue with your mood feeling low, in these six months, has it always been the same? Has it changed at all? Um, I feel like it's been quite consistently low. Okay. But um, I had an argument with my mum okay. about a week ago and I feel like it's got worse. Okay, okay. And why has the argument with your mum made it worse? I just feel like she's like the only person that I've got to talk to at the moment. Okay, okay. Now when people have issues with the mood, with low mood, they can experience other symptoms as well, okay. One of the things that we find is that people have issues um, doing the things that they normally would do, you know, your hobbies and things like that. Do you think that this is something that applies to you? Yeah, I, I really like watching films and mm. TV series, but I just I'm just not interested at the moment. Okay, okay. And they can also have an issue with uh, with sleep. Is that something that applies to you? Yeah, I guess so. I um, I feel like maybe I'm. I feel like I just get up at like really early. Yeah. And I just lay there till about. So I'll probably get up about six. Yeah. And I just lay there till about ten, and then I'm late for work. And that can then have a knock-on effect on, on energy levels. Do you mm. think that again, do you think that applies to you? Yeah, I just don't feel like I have any energy. Okay. You can have issues with concentration as well. Again, do you think that that's something that you, you've been having? Yeah, I just find it really hard to concentrate on my work and just feel yeah. like I'm just staring at the screen all the time. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes people can get quite irritable as well. Do you find that applies to you as well? Yeah, I just, okay. stuff that would normally bother me, really irritates me. Okay, okay. And it can have a knock-on effect on the, on your appetite. That can be reduced. Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, I just... I don't, I'm just not hungry. Like, I've noticed that some of my clothes are a bit looser and mm. all I really want to eat is toast. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and how's this mood made you feel about yourself? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Okay. Okay. And how does this mood make you feel about the future? I just feel a bit hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it can make you feel a little bit guilty about the situation. Does that apply to you as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm about to ask quite difficult questions, okay? So if at any point you need to stop, and that's completely fine. We'll take it at your pace. Okay. okay. Now, when people have symptoms like yours, okay, they can sometimes think about harming themselves. Is that something that applies to you? I just feel like sometimes maybe if I didn't wake up, that would be okay. I'm really sorry. That's, that sounds very difficult. And again, very difficult question. Have you ever, you know, planned taking your own life? No. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and if you don't mind me asking, why is that? I just, I wouldn't want to put that on my mum. Yeah. I couldn't do that to her. Yeah. And have, you ever, have you ever thought about harming others? No, no. Okay, okay. 
I just need to ask a few more questions about your symptoms just so I'm getting the, the, the full picture if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So you've mentioned you've had this persistently low mood, okay? But at any point have you had a really high mood, feeling very happy or related? No. Okay. Have you experienced anything that other people can't? So for example, hearing a voice that somebody else can't or seeing something that they can't? No. Okay. And do you think that you're in full control over your thoughts? Yeah. Okay, nobody's taking thoughts out of your head? No. Or putting them in? No. Okay, and people can't read your thoughts? No. Okay, okay. So you're giving me a lot of information there, some very sensitive information, okay? Have you got any ideas yourself about what this could be? I think I'm depressed. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think you are right. What, what you've what you've told me today. All the symptoms are of depression. Okay. But you've done the right thing in coming in to talk to us. Okay. That's always the hardest step. The hardest step is always coming in. Okay. You're in the right place to get the treatment that you need. Okay. I just need to ask a few more questions just so I can get out of the full picture, okay? But then later on, after this, we can talk about treatment options and things like that. Is that something that you would like? Yeah. Okay, okay. And is there anything particular concerning you that I've not covered with so far? Just the way I feel. Yeah, yeah. That's completely understandable. Okay. So again, as I said, I've just got to ask a few more questions now if that's okay. So, do you have any other medical conditions at all? No. Okay. And have you ever had issues with your mood in the past? No. Okay. Okay. And do you take any medications at all? No. And are you allergic to anything? No. Okay. Does anything run in the family? No. I don't think so. Okay. And do you live by yourself at the moment or do you live with somebody else? Yeah, my um, girlfriend moved out. No. Okay. Okay. And obviously you mentioned your mum is quite helpful at the moment. How far away is your mum from you at the moment? Um, about half an hour away. Okay, okay, that's good. And do you smoke at all? Yeah, I do. Okay, how many cigarettes a day are you smoking, would you say? Um, probably about five. Okay, now how long's that been going on for? Um, I think since I was like 25. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned having issues with work, concentration issues, and, and obviously turning up late because of issues with sleep. What is it that you do, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I work in IT. Okay. Mm. Okay. And do you drink any alcohol at all? Um, not as much as I used to. Okay. How much were you drinking, if you don't mind me asking? Um, like a bottle of wine a week. Okay. And how much are you drinking now? Nothing. Okay. And do you take any illicit drugs at all? No. Okay. No. Okay. So that's all the questions I've got for you. Have you got any questions for me before we finish? Not that I can think of. Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to go talk to my one of my seniors. Okay. And hopefully we'll come back together to see you. And we'll talk about what we need to do going forward to get you some help. Whether that's counselling, whether it's medication. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. On my mental state examination today, this patient appears disengaged, poorly kept with a lack of eye contact and lack of expression. Her speech is very slow and low in volume. With regards to emotions, the patient reports feeling low, her mood and affect are congruent. Her perception is normal and she's experiencing no hallucinations of any sensory modality. She has poverty of thought. Her thoughts are slow and laboured and the contents of said thoughts involve suicidal ideation. There is no evidence of formal thought disorder. She has insight into her condition. She has stated that she thinks she is depressed and recognises she needs to engage with treatment to get better. Finally, there are no issues with cognition. Overall, she is in the moderate to high risk category as she has suicidal ideations, however, hasn't harmed herself or planned to take her own life, and her main protective factor is a mother.